Everything is better when it's bigger. Paddy Power's Same Game Multi allows you to combine a number of selections from a single match into one big bet. Check out the Same Game Multi tab and get building your bet. Terms and conditions apply. 18plusbegumbleware.org Hi there, thanks for joining us for a Racing Post European Football Postcast Special. It's Bruce Millington, Mark Langdon, Liam Flynn and Paddy Power's Brian McDonnell and we're going to scour the continent for the best value on the four major leagues. We're also going to look ahead to Holland and Portugal. We're going to see what the fat lads fancy to come out on top in the classic battle between Barcelona and Real Madrid. Can Juve boss it in Italy? PSG we know are going to win in France, the question of how far, but there's loads of really competitive stuff and I've got to tell you in France it's the closest relegation battle I've ever seen. There's 11 teams quoted at single figures so hopefully the boys have sussed a few out there and where else are we? We're in Germany as well to see if Borussia Dortmund can challenge Bayern Munich's supremacy. So tons and tons of great stuff to get through. We will start though in Spain and I suppose the big glamour, glitzy battle, as always in European football, is who will come out on top between Barcelona and Real Madrid. Brian, could you give us a show of betting from Paddy Power? Yeah, we have Barcelona at 8-13, to Real Madrid 6-4, to Atletico Madrid 14-1, to Valencia 90-1, to Sevilla are 125 to 1, Villarreal 750 to 1, and it's 1,000 to 1 the rest. Blimey, that is comprehensive. Mark, is it a two horse race? Because this time last year, I was piling in on Atletico. It didn't really happen, but I, I, mean, I think it might be a one horse race. One horse race. Yeah, um, I, I mean, I, yeah, I think Atletico have lost quite a lot um, of, of what sort of made them sort of special if you look at. You know, uh, Lucas Hernandez and Godin, Antoine Griezmann. I think maybe in sort of two years they could come out of it better, but it, it looks to me to be a rebuilding process. Real Madrid have spent an absolute fortune this summer. And I looked at all their signings. Um, like, what have they got? Well, Luka Jovic, uh, Militao they got from Porto. Rodrigo's a young Brazilian, paid about 40 odd million for. The big one, of course, Eden Hazard. But I, I think Hazard's Dio and Furlan Mendy as well from Lyon was another £50 million pound signing. And I don't think he gets in the team either. I'm looking at them thinking the only one that's going to guarantee start is Hazard. They spent um, what must be about £200 million on players that just squad players. It doesn't make any any sense to me. Barcelona were 19 points better than them last season. They've added Frankie de Jong and also Antoine Griezmann to that. There could be Neymar to come as well. Um, I think they're, they're very worthy favourites. And you look at the history, people think that this is a close battle. Barcelona have won eight of the last 11 La Ligas. So um, I, I think that, you know... Uh, uh, a shade of odds on looks very fair to me. They're just so much more consistent than Real Madrid. And I, there's r- rumours that Zidane's not happy and could walk. I mean, it, it, they had the absolute nightmare pre-season. Um, I think Who'd I take was, over if he did? Uh, it'd probably be Pochettino. I think they would probably look to go to him next. Really? Do you think yeah. he'd walk out mid-season? I think for Real Madrid he might. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't, couldn't blame him either, really. Um, he feels like he's making his exit sort of talk already, isn't he? I mean, he's, he's had a couple of, um, you know, uh, departure kind of warnings, I think it's fair to say. So, All right, well, so just say Zidane does walk and then Pochettino goes in. Does it? Does that gap suddenly close? Not not in the, not in the short term, because I, I think that they're, if I look at Real Madrid's midfield, Casemiro, Modric um, and Tony Crowe's, Teams were running all over that last year, and it's not got any fitter, uh, not got any hungrier. Uh, he wanted Pogba, he wanted you know um, somebody re- a real stature in that midfield. They haven't been able to get it, and I, I don't see where that player comes from now. This late on into the window, I don't think Eriksson suddenly turns them into sort of you know this 19 point difference into you know winning the league against a Barcelona team that's strengthened anyway. And Mark, I just want to talk about a myth about Spanish football that it's a two horse race and they win every week rather like we. Suspect Liverpool and Man City <laughs> might do this season. They lost plenty of games last they year. Did. Didn't they did, yeah. I mean, Barcelona dropped a lot more points. Um, you know, when they were concentrating on Champions League, La Liga was over a long way out uh, for them. That wasn't really their fault. I mean, Madrid absolutely struggled. Atleti um, struggled, and so did just about everybody else. No, it was the Premier League that was sort of you know racking up the 197 points. Was it something like that? And, you know, uh, nearly 200 points between the big two. Now, I think Barcelona. 
um, a, a, a clear favourite here. Is that going to be the most confident case you make on the whole postcast? Uh, no, I, think I fancy PSG for Ooh, France. Okay. So, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, no, I, I, I think I mean Barcelona are sort of one for the Ackers, yeah. Yeah, OK. Well, yeah, that might be what happens as, as the course of this postcast unfolds, that we get teams who... Perhaps some punters will be quite happy to lump on Barcelona at a shade of odds, and others they might be a bit too short to tie your money up between now and May. So we might be in the process of building ourselves an Acker. Should do you agree, Liam, that Acker, that Acker should include Barca, or do you give Real a bit more of a chance? No, I, I'm actually going to go for Real Madrid. I'm going to go for the other Clasico club. I just I can see why everybody's going for Barcelona. Such comprehensive winners last season. I mean, they were they're 19 points ahead of, of Real Madrid, but. I think if any any club can overturn that deficit, it, it is Real Madrid. The, I think the thing you've got to remember is last season was one a season of transition for them. They had a lot of uh, issues in terms of management. Obviously, now Zidane has come in. He's got had a full summer to work in an environment he's pretty familiar with. He won you know three Champions Leagues there, and I think their signings this summer. I mean, Eden Hazard is arguably the the most exciting player they've had since Ronaldo left. Uh, Luka Jovic, I know I can understand Mark's point about saying some of these players probably aren't going to feature, but I could see Luka Jovic given a decent run in the team, possibly starting towards the uh, sort of into the second half of the season at least. And I just think that that, that squad, it was stagnating, it was ageing, and it needed an injection of the youth of Rodrigo, Edo Militao, Felon Mendy. And at the prices, I, I would rather back Real Madrid. I just think not all is, I know it's, it's, you can't really say it when Barcelona have you know, won the title so convincingly, but I don't actually think all is well there. The fact that uh, you know, Lionel Messi took to the pitch recently to almost uh, to, on the microphone to almost reiterate to the Barcelona fans that winning La Liga was a good thing. Uh, just sort of highlights what is pretty unhealthy obsession with conquering Europe and, and winning the Champions League. I think that could, you know, ultimately prove their downfall. They're so distracted by that. Um, Frankie Dion is an excellent addition, but again, I think for me that midfield still looks a little bit static. I don't think. Uh, I mean, Ivan Rakitic is, is, you know, is getting older, Sergio Busquets is getting older, De Jong adds a little bit of life to it, but it's not the Barcelona midfield of old uh, by any means. And, and defensively, there's, there's still issues as well. I mean, there's a bit of debate over whether or not Antoine Griezmann was a good signing, because if there's one area of the pitch, you could argue that they don't need improvements. It's in the final third with, with Messi and, and Suarez, who is on the wane, but obviously you're talking about Ousmane Dembele, who's a very exciting young player, and, and Neymar coming in as well. Um, and I just think, you know, defensively last season, um, they conceded more than, than Hatafe, than Valencia, than Atletico Madrid. So there's certainly um, something to attend to there. And then when you come to the sort of the third side, I don't think Atletico Madrid will be in the picture at all. I mean, Joao Felix has looked great in pre-season, but really, I mean, he's, he's quite unproven for the, the money they paid for him. Uh, and their the, the back line has been completely ripped apart. Diego Godin gone, Juan Fran, Felipe Luis and, and Rodri, who's obviously gone to Man City now. He was a, a real key component of that team. And they've lost the goals of, of Antoine Griezmann. I think uh, Hermoso is a, a good buy at the back for them, but generally I, I can't see them uh, anywhere near that. So at the prices, I would, I would say Real Madrid would be my pick. Mark, you're so courteous. It's just a great colleague. I mean, there's plenty of people who would have just fixed a death stare on Liam. No, I mean, tried to sort of put him down. I, I, you just I, sat there impassively and listened I, to what he had to say. I just think, like, you know, when you're comparing, like, Luka Jovic to Antoine Griezmann in terms of signings, I mean, you know, maybe Jovic will will prove to be, you know, a good player one day, but I mean he's got it all on to, you know, match what Griezmann's done already. Um and I, I think Neymar, if he goes, I mean, just adds even more, doesn't he? I mean, it'd be fun to watch. Who won't play then? Uh, I think Neymar Suarez, I think Luis I, I think Luis Suarez will be rotated out of the team more often whether Neymar arrives or not because they've got his man Dembele and if Neymar doesn't come they'll probably have Coutinho as well so I think Suarez Coutinho as well yeah <laughs> but Suarez is really close to Messi so um, it, it, it'll still get his minutes that's for sure Brian Mark likes Barcelona Liam likes Real Madrid who do you like? I like uh, Barcelona as well, yeah. Um, Real Madrid have, have had a huge overhaul of their squad this season and I think it's just going to take a bit of time for them to gel. Um, pre-season hasn't gone too well for them. They haven't looked too too smooth in pre-season. So I think if they're five or six points behind already in, in October, it might be too big of a, of a bridge to gap. Now then, I'm quite like the old top four. Last year it was very fascinating, wasn't it? Little Getafe almost got into the top four, pipped on the final day. What's the latest betting to be in the top four in La Liga this year, Brian? Yeah, so we have Atletico Madrid at one to four, Valencia eleven to eight, Seville eight to five, Athletic Bilbao six to one, Villarreal fifteen to two, Ibar ten to one, Sociedad ten to one, Real Betis eleven to one, Getafe eleven to one, 
Espanyol 14 to 1 and 25 to 1 bar those. I'll tell you, if I bar get in there, Liam, their ground only holds about 2,000, doesn't it? It's competitive, that, isn't it? Do you th is there any value there on the top four in Spain, Liam? Yeah, I think uh, Valencia, I might even look at them sort of without Barcelona and Real Madrid in, in that market because I've, I've kind of made clear what I think about Atletico Madrid this season. I think they're, they're finally uh, settled under the stewardship of Marcelino. They've had issues with manager. I think he's their longest serving manager since Unai Emery was there now. Um, and they're, you know, very, very um, def defensively robust. Not the most exciting team to watch necessarily, but only Atletico Madrid uh, conceded fewer goals than them last season. They won the Copa del Rey, had a very good one in, in the Europa League. And I think that proves that they they have the squad depth to kind of cope with multiple competitions in a season. Uh, they haven't really lost any um, any players of note this summer. Um, and they've added in uh, Maxi Gomez from Celta Vigo. I think it's an excellent addition um, to their front line. And, and given Atletico Madrid's problems and their, the rebuilding project, even with a fantastic manager like Diego Simeone, I, I think Valencia should, should pit them to third spot. Mark, what do you think? Top three, top four? I, I was definitely looking at sort of Valencia um, and then sort of today there's big, big suggestions that Rodrigo, the forwards off to Atletico Madrid and Marcelino and the sporting director are at war with the owner now and I, it doesn't take much at Valencia for it to just suddenly fall apart. Um, they've had, Liam mentioned there, the kind of issues they've had previously. Um, so I just think at the, definitely on paper at the moment, I think Atletico and Valencia um, will finish third and fourth. And you maybe argue a case for Valencia to finish third, but just the, this latest stuff, it, um, it would, would, would worry me, I, I think. So uh, Sevilla have brought in a lot of players and they've got Lopetegui as the coach now. Of course, uh, nobody's, uh, nobody's chosen worse than him in the last year or so. Um, you know, getting sacked from Spain before the World Cup started and then Real Madrid sacked after a couple of months. The, I, I'm not sure about the players that they've brought in. Um, it, it looks to me to be that they've gone for quantity over quality. I was looking at, at Athletic Bilbao, were eighth last season. Uh, Inaki Williams has, has, has stayed on and, and I think that's a, that's a big one for them. I really like him. Of course... Um, athletic or a team that can only sign. He signed a nine-year contract. He did, he? yeah. I mean, you can only well for, for them. Um, it's only people like Alan Pardew get nine-year <laughs> contracts. Yeah, but they're, they're, they're a very unique club in that they can only buy Basque players. So when they sell the players, that you have to pay the release calls, as Chelsea found out with Kepa, Manchester United with Herrera. Um, so I, I think that Athletic showed enough last season at home. It's always their away form. Um, but it wouldn't take a huge amount for them um, to suddenly sort of leap in, in, into that um, sort of mix. And with doubts over Valencia, the stability there in, in the last sort of couple of days or so, I'll go for Athletic Bilbao at a nice price. OK, that's one of the grounds I want to do. Have you done Bilbao? I haven't. I've never been to the fancy back country. It? I do fancy yeah. it. I mean, there, I mean there, you, you can... It was possible, I think, to do there and the way the fixtures fell, them and Sociedad in the same day. Um, wow. Yeah, Sid Lowe did like a, a morning game with one of them. I think there may even have been a three o'clock game somewhere and then an eight o'clock. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. So it that puts my day trip to Barcelona to shame. <laughs> that was on where I took my son for his 21st to go and see Lionel Messi and he got crocked after three minutes. <laughs> That was good. OK, let's look at who's going to be top scorer in the league. Or I guess me that man Messi is at the top of the market, is he, Brian? He is Bruce. Yeah, Lionel Messi is four to six. Luis Suarez thirteen to two. Aiden Hazard nine to one. Karim Benzema ten to one. Griezmann eleven to one. Morata twenty to one. Luka Jovic twenty twos. Diego Costa twenty twos. Aspas twenty fives. Liam. Uh, yeah, if you're looking for an each way bet, Munis de Boer. He's signed by Sevilla from Red Bull Salzburg uh, this summer, where he scored forty four goals in seventy six matches. Um, and only the two El Clasico clubs scored more than Sevilla last season. So they're a very uh, attacking outfit. Mark. Well, Messi, 36 goals last year. I mean, if he stays fit, I think he wins. He's quite good, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Brian, what do you think? Uh, not a market I'm particularly keen on getting involved in, but uh, Luka Jovic is twice the price of Benzema, so it could be valued there each way. Um, what's the latest on the relegation from Paddy Power, Brian? Uh, relegation, we have Mallorca at 5-6, to six, Granada 13-10, to 10, Alaves 7-5, to five, Valladolid 7-5, to five, Osasuna 6-4, to four, Levante are five to two, Leganes seven to two, Celta Vigo six to one, Espanyol ten to one, Ibar thirteen to one, Real Sociedad thirteen to one, Real Betis fourteen to one, and it's eighteens bar those. Well, that's competitive. Alaves were challenging for top four this time last year. Quite sorry, quite late early this year, Mark. What's happened to them? For um, well, it was. Uh... 
it was a case of them massively outperforming expected goals. I mean, you have a look at sort of like they were always, they were still being priced up in a match by match basis as if they were as, um, you know, this kind of potential relegation struggler. So, what have you got for us? Um, well, then, Mark? well I, I'm, in Spain, they, they, they're sort of certain that Mallorca are in a world of pain, but they are odds on. I mean, I, I think they've, they, they have come up, but. Um, I think it's going to be difficult for them. They haven't really been able to strengthen enough. I was looking at Levante as the ones, um, for, for me, their expected goals last year was the worst in the league. Um, they've got like a, a, a low budget as well. So, I mean, if you put them two things together, I think you've got a bad team. They've also lost my favourite player, uh, name player anyway, David Jason. Um, really? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think he's just known as Jason. Um, he's, he's gone to Valencia, but his first name is David. Oh, um, yeah, and he's got about five names in between. But yeah, uh, David uh, Jason, has, um, <laughs> he, he's left to go to up the road to Valencia. So I, I thought they um, might be the ones. Also sooner. I think they'll stay up, you know, uh, it's a horrible place to go to, Pamplona, and I think their home form will be enough to keep them up. So at least one established team um, is in trouble, I think. Any relegation fancies from you, Liam? Yeah, I like the look of uh, Valladolid. They, they finished four points above the drop zone last season. It was very tight uh, at the bottom. And unlike a lot of the teams down there, their issue wasn't defensively. It was they, they really struggled for goals. They are the lowest scorers in the division. And their uh, solution to that seems to have been to bring in uh, the Everton striker, Sandro Ramirez, um, who, you know, quite frankly, has been uh, abhorrent over the last couple of seasons. I mean, he failed to score in loan spells with, with Sevilla and Sociedad, much better teams going forward. So I, I don't really know how he's going to solve their goal issue. And they've also been weakened at the back by uh, the departure of probably their best defender, Fernando Calero, who's gone to Espanyol for about six, seven million euros. So all over the pitch, I just think there are issues for them and, and uh, odds against, I, I think they're a good bet. Brian, you like Barcelona to win La Liga. Is there anything else you like, either slightly further down at the top or indeed in the relegation race? Yeah, I agree with Liam for a relegation with uh, Valladolid. Um, they were lucky to get promoted when they came up from the second tier two years ago. Um, they were lucky to stay up last season when they won three out of their last five games. And I think their luck might just run out this season. Lovely stuff. Let's move on to Italy then. Uh, Serie A, our favourites, I guess. Not I guess, I know. Are you Juventus, aren't they, Brian? Yep, so we have Juventus at 4-9, to nine, Napoli 9-2, to two, Inter Milan 5-1, to one, AC Milan 25-1, to one, Roma 35-1, to one, Atalanta 55-1, to one, Lazio 60-1, to one, and it is 500-1 to one bear those. Mark, is there any reason to oppose Juve? I, I don't think so. I like the way Brian gives a nice full it's list. A re- it's enough. a very full list. The all racing yeah. one, Binnas could take note, couldn't he? Give yeah. you like, the first Binnas three. gives you the first two or three, <laughs> yeah. didn't he? Yeah. Um, it's like four to one bar. Um, no, I, I, Juventus, I think, are... I mean, what people are saying is that Maurizio Sarri could be the, um, the weak link, not necessarily the right word, but it, he doesn't fit what a Juventus manager usually is what he looks like, how he sort of carries himself, just that is, is seen as a problem. But I mean, I, Sarri was the best coach in Serie A. And then he went to Chelsea, everyone thought he did a terrible job and yet he still finished third, won a Europa League and reached the League Cup final and the team didn't actually play the football he wanted. So they still muddled their way through. So, I mean, even if Juventus have to muddle their way through with Cristiano Ronaldo um, and players like that, I think, I think, I think they'll do it just fine. Um, they Increase their midfield options with Ramsey and Rabio at the back with Delit coming in. Um, you know, adds another quality defender to them. They've got so many options in, in the attacking third as well. Will um, Ramsey get much of a look in? Do you think? I think he will. I think midfield's been a, a, a little bit of an issue um, for them, and I think it's why they won't win the Champions League. Because I'm not sure they're good enough in midfield, but it doesn't seem to matter um, in Serie A. And I still don't think that Inter and, and Napoli, and it's about sort of eleven to ten each or two, who sort of in the, the betting without um, Juventus. I'm not sure which one of them's the best one, and I don't think either have made quite enough. You know, Juventus are going to have to have a big old drop off. Um, and they're going to need to improve. They might improve. I don't see Juve dropping off. So Juve, a safe Acre company. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they're in Barcelona, I think, it is, an, is a nice double, to be fair. What are your Serie A thoughts, Liam? Yeah, I'd echo it. I mean, everything's been, been said about Juventus, really. I mean, at the top of the table from, I think, August 25th onwards last season, won by 11 points, strengthened with Ramsey, Rabiot and De Ligt. I, I couldn't see past him. Uh, Sarri accumulated 91 points the last time he was in Italy with, with Napoli. So, yeah, they'd, they'd be the standout option to win it. If you're looking for a bet, then maybe into Milan in the, the without market. Obviously, like Mark said, it's a bit of a... A toss up between Inter and, and Napoli, but I, I'd go with Italy um, with Inter. Sorry, because um, I mean, although they've got a bigger deficit to overturn than Napoli, a lot of people rave about the 
um, the Napoli's defence, but actually I really like the look of what Inter have got at the back now. De Vrij, uh, Skridinar, who's a really highly rated young defender, and now they've added uh, sort of the battle hard and Diego Godin from Atletico Madrid to that as well. I think Lukaku will get on better in Serie A than he has done uh, in the Premier League at Manchester United. I think it's uh, probably the pace of the, the league will suit him uh, more. And, and additionally, I don't think Ivan Perisic is, is, a, is a massive loss for them either. I think he was it's getting towards the wrong side of 30. I don't think he's going to add an awful lot to Bayern Munich either. So, uh, and, then, and additionally, Antonio Conte is a, is a proven winner with, with three Serie A titles to his name. So I, I can s certainly see an argument for them finishing second. Brian, what are your views on the top of the Serie A title race? Yeah, I agree with the last completely. I think Juventus win and I will be in the Inter Milan in the Benton without market. Um, Antonio Conte, they have a bigger gap to bridge than Napoli do, but Antonio Conte has a great record with his first year in charge. He brought Juventus from seventh to the league title in his first year in charge. He brought Chelsea from tenth to the league title in his first year in charge. So if he can reproduce that sort of form, I think Inter Milan can go close this season. They've brought in Diego Godin. They've Conte's finally got his man in Romelu Lukaku. Uh, so I think they're the, the bet for in the bet without market. OK, let's have a look at top scorer there, because obviously Ronaldo is going to be fab, but I should think Lukaku features there as well, doesn't he, Brian? He does, yeah. So we have Cristiano Ronaldo at 17-10, to 10, Christoph Piatek at 9-2, to 2, Mario Icardi 13-2, to 2, Lukaku, we're ducking at 17-2. to 2. There is 14s to 1 out there on him. Um, Duvan Zabata, 9-1, to 1, Quagliarella, 11-1. to 1. 14 to 1 bear those. Mark, any thoughts there? Yeah, I mean, if Icard, Icard, there's talk of Icardi going to Napoli. I think if Icardi goes to Napoli, that is a match made in heaven and he'll score a bundle of goals um, for them. But we, you know, at the moment, he's, he's on Instagram more than he is sort of on the football pitch. So I, you can't really advise him. I'm, this has got, you look at the past winners of the, um, of the, the Golden Boot in Italy. You get some weird, like Quagliarella was sort of, you know, and you get weird, weird, weird winners. Um, usually from provincial clubs, somebody scores a load of goals. Uh, Federico Chiesa is 125 to 1. His only, his best tally so far is six goals, son of. Um, yeah, uh, Enrico. Yeah, but he plays in a wider position, but he got three for the Italian under 21s. No doubt in my mind, he's going to be a star for the Italian national team and will move on to, to bigger and better things, probably Juventus, that's where they normally go. Wide players are starting to sort of, you know, you, you get this thing now where wide players can score just as many goals as anybody else. I'm not sure if, if Fiorentina will be good enough, um, but 125 to 1, somebody of his ability, um, I, I think he will leave those six goals behind at some stage in his career. Why not now? Wow, Chiesa, C-H-I-E-S-A, 125 to 1. Liam, top scorer in Italy will be? Uh, yeah, I'll go towards the top of the market. I mean, Ronaldo's uh, obviously the clear market leader, but the fact is three players finished ahead of him in the scoring charts last season, Cagliarella, Zapata and Piatek. Cagliarella, I, I can't see him doing that again at, at his age. He might prove me wrong, but the one I'd look, uh, like the look of is Chrissy of Piatek at, at Milan. I think he's, you know, he scored 22 goals last season at, at Genoa and Milan. He's now settled um, uh, with Milan, and I think at the age of 24, he's only going to get better of, of those players. He's the one who's probably who's got the most improvement in him, so I think he'd be uh, quite a good bet. Brian, have you got a fancy? It sounds like you're very keen as a company on Lukaku, if you're virtually half the price that other people in the industry are. Yeah, I've backed Lukaku myself at 14 to 1. Uh, it's, he's been, uh, Conte has been an admirer of him for a long time. He's tried to get him in. He thinks that he suits his style of play. So I think he will score goals. He's proven in the Premier League. So I don't see why he won't do it in Serie A. One person I definitely wouldn't be backing is Cristiano Ronaldo. He takes up too much of the market. Um, Juventus have won the league title for the last eight years, but no Juventus player has won the top goal score award since Alessandro Del Piero back in 2008. So that just shows that they sort of share their goals around. Um, Ronaldo won't be, he could be rested if Juventus get to the latter stages of the Champions League. So he's definitely one that I would rule out of any Yakas. Excellent, interesting stuff. Right, let's look at the bottom of the table. Who's going to go down from Serie A to Serie B this year? What's the latest betting, Brian? Yeah, we have Verona at 4-9, to nine, Lecce at 1-2, to two, Brescia 6-5, to five, Parma 7-5, to five, Spal 5-2, to two, Udinese 4-1. to one. Cagliari four to one, Genoa six to one, and seventeen to two bar those. And Brian will stick with you for the best bet out of that little lot. Uh, I have Verona to go down. They are the, the favourites to go down, but they are a bit of a, a yo-yo club. They've been relegated twice from Syria in the last four years. They've hired a new manager, uh, Ivan Juric, and his win percentage in Syria is seventeen percent. So nothing to to be shouting shouting about there. So I think Verona quite rightly fives to go back down. Liam. 
Yeah, so obviously the new uh, newly promoted sides dominate the top of that market. But as we've seen, bigger clubs can get drawn in. Fiorentina were down there last season. I think Spal are overpriced at 5-2. to two. I mean, they, they were right down there. They heaved themselves out of danger towards the end of last season with shock wins over, over Lazio and Juventus. And that was kind of as those two teams, their seasons were winding down, really. So no team outside the, 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 the relegated clubs last season lost more matches than Spal. And I don't think they're, they're helped by the, the departure of their midfielder, Manuel Lazzari. So I, I think they're overpriced. Where is Spal? Uh, My Italian geography is not great, but I've certainly never heard of a place called Spal. Wow. I don't know. I'll Google it while you're telling us who's going to go down. Well, I, I think, first of all, the, the good news is um, for, for relegation punters is Brescia are decent. Uh, Tonelli, uh, they, 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 they suggest, is the new Pirlo, um, I think, can help them. In midfield, I was looking at two. I think Udinese, uh, the Pozzo seem to have given up. Um, on, on them. You remember before when they used to have Alexis Sanchez and, and players like that. I mean, that's just completely um, gone now. I, they don't seem to have much quality at all. So Udinese won at an absolutely massive price. I thought Sampdoria, um, we saw their, um, their neighbours, Genoa, get called into all kinds of bother last year. Uh, Prayer has gone to Leicester, Anderson's gone to Leon. Quagli Rella's 36. If he doesn't produce the form he did last year, um, they could be ones to watch at a massive price. And just on the top four market, Atalanta uh, were rated ahead of most of the big teams in Italy last season. They haven't done much business, but I don't think they needed to. So um, I think they could be the value against the likes of Milan and Roma, who you know uh, perennially un underachieve. I didn't hear a word of that because I was looking at SPAL. It's an acronym. Um, it's in a town called Ferrera between Bologna and Venice. So there you go. Right, OK, uh, we're all done in Italy, are we yet? Yeah, absolutely. Jolly yeah. good. We're going to look at the Bundesliga next. Friends, or maybe more, earn a 20 quid free bet for every friend you refer to Paddy Power thanks to our Friends with Benefits programme. Log in to your Paddy Power account and share your referral link to get started. Terms and conditions apply. 18plusbegambleaware.org. Welcome back to the Racing Post European season-long special postcast. Bruce Millington, Mark Langdon, Liam Flynn and Paddy Powers, Brian McDonald. We're going to look at Germany now, where Bayern Munich, of course, have been the Kaisers for so many years. Will they rule again? I guess they're pretty short, aren't they, Brian? Yeah, we have Bayern Munich 1-4, to four, Dortmund are 4-1, to one, Leipzig 16-1, to one, Leverkusen are 40-1, to one, and it is 100-1 to one bar those four. Have you got any top four betting or any way we can preview the top of the German league in a slightly more exciting way than assessing whether a 1-4 to four shot wins? Uh, top four betting, we have Leipzig at 4-7, to seven, Leverkusen 11-10, to 10, Hoffenheim 2s, Borussia Mönchengladbach 2s, Eintracht Frankfurt and Wolfsburg are both 5-1. to one. And seven to one bear those. Okay, well, I suppose, Lynn, the first question is are Bayern Munich good things? If they are, just say so. But then give me a bit of some sort of uh, excitement to give me some value for you. No, I, actually, I think Dortmund. I think, oh. I think they're the best bet of the entire season for me out of any league. I just, uh, last campaign, it was Lucien Favre's first season in charge, supposed to be a, sort of a season of consolidation, yet they took the title race to the final day, first time since 2010. And they've acted very well and acted very quickly in the transfer this uh, transfer window this summer. Not only have they plugged a, a position that's troubled them for a long time in left back, bringing in Nico Schulz, who's a German international, played for Hoffenheim, uh, but they've also improved their midfield, added to an embarrassment of riches there already by bringing in Thorgan Hazard and, and Julian Brand, who's very versatile, can play in that holding midfield role as well. They won the German Super Cup. I know it's early days, but I think that's a sign of things to come. I just think, um, you know, the Bavarians are absolutely outclassed by Liverpool in the Champions League last season, and I think they're in a real state of transition. Uh, they've tried to inject a bit of youth, bringing in Luca Hernandez, Benjamin Pavard, and Jan Fiete up the, the Hamburg striker. But I just think that the majority of that squad is, is past its best. And if there was a time to be uh, back in Borussia Dortmund, I, I think it's this season. Oh, Mark, do you agree with that? Yeah, I, I mean, I certainly would. I mean. Buying a shorter price than Juve and Barcelona, I'd definitely fancy those two more than I would. Uh, They're not in the ACA, Bayern. No, 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 no way. Um, they've won seven in a row, but um, yeah, I think in losing Robin and Ribery, they've lost some real sort of standard setters in the dressing room as much as anything else. And Hummels leaving Bayern to go to Dortmund solves one of Dortmund's biggest issues, which was you know defending. Uh, you know, maybe he's past his best, but I still think he's got a 
a calmness that probably had he been there last year would have seen them over the line. You know, you, you look at somebody like Sancho, surely only getting better, absolutely uh, ripped buying apart in that Super Cup. I, I, I think they've got the better coach. Favre is definitely better than Kovac. Um, I, I think Dortmund can give him a go. I'd probably rather back Dortmund and also have a little bit on Leipzig as well. Um, this is a team, Ampadu and Lookman have gone there. So, I mean, they'll be the ones for sort of the, the British um, sort of interest. Um, but also, they've got a lot of good young players. Coach Julian Nagelsmann got Hoffenheim to punch above their weight um, incredibly to take them to the Champions League. And the football they played was, was sensational. If he can sort of get the same improvement out of Leipzig, um, they don't have as far to go. And they could easily be involved in, in, in this title race as well and um, also think in terms of top four uh, Leverkusen Kai Havertz is just a sensational player and somebody like Frankfurt you know losing Jovic in LA is just too much for them so um, yeah probably lay by in, in the Bundesliga outright market and Leverkusen top four. Blimey O'Reilly I thought it was a dead duck I didn't think it was worth debating but the boys are very keen to oppose Barney you Brian? Yeah, absolutely. Full house for uh, for Dortmund. They've signed well this summer. They've got in uh, Alcazar on a perm uh, permanently. They've got in Julian Brandt, Torgan Hazard. They have Royce, Goza, Sancho up top. A really young, energetic squad. Um, they've already beaten Bayern Munich in the Super Cup 2-0 uh, a, a week or so ago. And that is, uh, that's a very competitive game in Germany. It's not a, a glorified friendly like the Community Shield here. So 4-1, to one, big price on uh, Dortmund. Excellent. Jolly good. Um, let's look at the bottom of the table. What's the latest on the relegation, Brian? So we have Paderborn at one to two, Union Berlin four to seven, Augsburg then fifteen to eight, FC Köln nine to four, Freiburg five to two, and nine to two bar those. Mark, does anything excite you in the rel? No, not really. There's a big difference between Bundesliga two and and the Bundesliga. I think Union Berlin have got a better chance than Paderborn. Um, they're uh, very much sort of community club, sort of that left wing sort of St. Pauli kind of. Um, vibe going on and the, the crowd are going to be massively up for it and sort of may help them but I think in terms of budget and just quality those bottom two are the worst two teams I, it's, it, I wouldn't back either of them but okay. I think they are um, I think they are very solid uh, You spotted an opening for profit in the relegation Liam? Yeah I have I, I agree I think Union Berlin and Paderborn will be down there but I think Cologne have enough to sort of hold their own so I think there's definitely a, you know, room to look at another side and I, I'd say Fortuna Dusseldorf I mean they, they finished 10th last season after promotion and um, sort of punched above their weight but they've gone and lost their, their top two goal scorers from last season in Doddy Lukabakio uh, who returned to Watford um, and who's now at Hertha Berlin and, and Benito Roman the wide player who's now gone to, to Schalke and they relied on goals last season because they were so shaky at the back I mean they're they only the bottom four in the division conceded more than them and uh, they were of course infamously on the wrong end of that sort of 7-1 spanking by Eintracht Frankfurt in which Luka Jovic sort of first made a big name for himself so I definitely think that they're, they're worth, a, worth a look. Brian any relegation fancies? Yeah, I'll throw another team into the mix. Freiburg at 5-2. to two. They were the second worst team in Bundesliga based on the XG stats last season. Um, if they don't improve on that, they'll be hovering around the relegation zone again this season. Anything else in Germany, lads? No, not, not, not for me. I, I expect Lewandowski to win um, Golden Boot. Um, How short is he for that, Brian? He's a shade of odds on 10-11. to 11. Worth yeah, a I, I, well, I just thought, no, I, I just always get nervous with golden boots like at ten to eleven. One injury could 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 be could kill you really. But I think if he stays fit, he will. You know, he'll, he'll get the job done. I, I'd say I, I like look at Paco Alcacer at, at Dortmund. Averaged a goal every sixty-seven minutes last season. Uh, Eighteen league goals, only four behind uh, Robert Lewandowski, I think. Um, and he actually had an injury which sort of kept him out for eight or nine matches last season. If he's fully fit, then he's certainly worth a look. And the other one at a longer, uh, bigger price, fifty to one. Luca Waldschmidt at, at Freiburg is top scorer at Euro under 21s so with uh, with uh, seven goals and um, reminds me a bit of Luca Badowski. So I think he could be worth a look. Remind me, Mark, where we're going to be able to watch European football this year? It's all changed. It's it, just it, be on Sky, and you can just sit. It, back it is all changed. It's all changed. So Premier Sport is where you're watching your Italian football. Uh, right, B not in my house. Yeah, <laughs> BT, yeah, BT have got Bundesliga and also the French. Nobody has got La Liga yet. It's um, oh, it's still it's up, still being debated. Premier Sports have admitted they've put a bid in. Uh, reports to Amazon Prime are also in the hunt. Oh, I've got that. All oh, right, oh, yeah, there you go. Right, I'm, yeah. I'm, 
I'm cheering on Premier Sport in that particular battle because that means you know I, it means I'll be able to get the you know the Spanish and the Italian under one subscription. So uh, I can actually use my Amazon Prime for things other than my wife's gardening utensils <laughs> and clothes and stuff. That'd be good. Uh, yeah. So um, at the moment, I mean, season starts on Friday and nobody's got it at the moment. I'm I sure know, it will change, right. but um, yeah. Incredible. So who's got the French? Uh, BT. BT have got the French, and that is where we're going to go next. Obviously, well, I say obviously because I, th I said obviously Bayern Munich are, are, are hot favourites in, in Germany and the lads all jumped on me and opposed the hell out of him. Just very quickly, is anyone planning to oppose PSG on the outright here? No? No. no right, so what's the latest on the outright? And then maybe give some top four or some without PSG or something to excite us in France, Brian. Yeah, PSG are 1-12, to Lyon are 9-1, to Marseille 40-1, to Lille 40-1 to and 50-1 to bar those. In the betting without PSG, we have Lyon as favourites at 11 to 10. Lille are 9 to 2 second fives. Saint Etienne then 17 to 2 and 10 to 1 Bardos. We'll stick with you, Brian. Any any juice in the top of the French table? Uh, I like Lyon in the betting without market. Um, they lost Nabil Fekker to Real, uh, to Real Batiste. They lost Tanguay and Dembele to Tottenham, of course. But they have um, uh, replaced them well. They've got two of Lille's star performers from last season in Yusuf Kone and Thiago Mendes. Lille themselves have also lost Nicolas Pepe. Um, Marseille were a mess last season with off-field issues, stadium bans. The fans were rioting. Um, they brought Andre Villas-Boas in. He's taken over there. Oh, they had a poor, you're joking. Uh, People they, still they, employ they, him. Yeah, they had a poor they had a poor start to the season uh, at the weekend. There, they lost two 0 at home to Ream. So I think um, there's a lot of issues with a lot of the competitors. So Leon at eleven to ten in the betting without market for me. Ring can only get better, I suppose. For, uh, for as far as Mars, I mean, look, I've, they've they've employed Villas Boas, which tells you that they haven't got much money. Their budget is actually well because um, they've they've got to pay for his redundancy. Well, yeah, well, um, well, they they. they they went for it, you know, they ended up with Balotelli, um, Torvan as well. So they had a few, um, Payet, they spent an absolute fortune on Payet. Um, so they've still got a couple of good players, but um, the, as, um, as Brian was saying, the spirit's all wrong. Um, yeah, so. What's your French fancies, Mark? Um, oh, it's Leon with, uh, without, I mean, I, I'm quite strong on this one. Um, I, 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 for all the reasons really that Brian mentioned, they've weakened their main competitors, I think, in, in terms of Lille. The only concern I've got is that Lille have got an absolute genius in the sporting director role, Luis Campos, who has identified all of these players really cheaply that they've managed to sell on for an absolute fortune. And you don't know if he's managed to do it again. You know, it, it won't be until sort of Christmas time. We know whether he's... But I think it's very difficult to keep keep doing that, to keep on finding players. You know, it might may take a year for Lille to sort themselves out. I don't really see any other dangers. I mean, Marseille are, are just... Pretty hopeless, I think, at the moment. Um, and then Villas Boas there uh, uh, as well just is, is another negative for them. So I think Leon have, have got it all on. I mean, Moussa Dembele is an um, absolute quality player. They still kept Memphis Depay. Um, they've signed all the players that Brian mentioned. I, I think they're, they're a good thing. Leon, Liam, do you fancy Leon? Uh, yeah, full house for Leon in the without PSG market. Like uh, pretty much everything's been said. But I mean, Jason Denaye and uh, Joachim Anderson make for a good defensive partnership. Completely outclassed. Uh, Monaco in that that opening game of the season, Monaco just looked all over the place, and and Lille have had a you know lost some significant players, Nicola Pe uh, Nicola Pepe, Rafael Leo, and, and Thiago Mendes. Um, so and I also think they've got quite a small squad, so with European football as well. That it is just worth mentioning. Monaco have just broke their transfer record for Ben Yedder from Sevilla, and there's talk that they want Icardi and a couple of others. So I don't know if they're going to suddenly. You, you remember a few years ago they they went for it. I don't know if they're sort of pumping the money back in. So. Um, that would be that would be the only concern that Monaco end up with a, a team that's miles better in a couple of weeks' time. But at the moment, they're, they're nowhere near. Right then, top scorer in La Liga. I guess Mbappe heads the market. Let's see if the lads have got any fancies after Brian gives us the latest betting. Yeah, so Kylian Mbappe is four to seven favourite. Cavani next at four to one. Neymar ten to one. Will he? Won't he be in the league? We don't know yet. Moussa Dembele twelve to one. Memphis to buy eighteen to one and twenty fives. Bear those. I thought you were about to give us a prize for a play called Willie Wonty. <laughs> Who does he play for? Liam, where's the value here? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously the market's saturated by PSG players, but I think the goals tend to be spread around them. And I, I'd like the look of uh, Leon's main man, Moussa Dembélé, has scored fifteen goals last season. Uh, scored in their opener uh, against Monaco, and I think he's uh, you know six foot odds. He's going to profit from the pace and, and movement on the on the flanks of Traoré and Depay. Langi? Uh, Cavani. Um, I mean, just against Mbappe, you know, it doesn't take much for something to go wrong um, in this market. Cavani got a pen 
um, in, in week one. Uh, I mean, he's he's still a world class striker himself, uh, and Mbappe does still play um, in, in sort of the, the wider position. I think he's becoming more of a team player within that dynamic. He won it last year, but I don't think there's a, as much between the, the pair as, as what the odds suggest. Brian, have you got a fancy? Are you going to take on the favourite here as well? No, I like Mbappe. I think he just wins uh, at 4-7. to seven. He's got 33 league goals last season. We have a couple of specials as well. Uh, we have him to score at least 30 league goals at 4-5 to five and at least 35 at 4-1. to one. He's already off the mark with one, so good start there. OK, I mentioned at the start of the show that the French relegation is really, really competitive. I don't think there's an odds-on shot in there, is there, Brian? There's not no. We have Dijon at the top of the market at seven to four. Neem next at nine to four. Brest newcomers nine to four. Amiens five to two. Metz seven to two. Angers nine to two. Toulouse nine to two. Strasbourg nine to two. Nantes six to one. Reims six to one. And fifteen to two bar those. That's amazing, isn't it? Liam, start us off. Where's the value? Uh, I think Brest could be a, a good one to go for. I mean, they came up second last season uh, behind uh, Metz. So certainly the weaker of the two teams who came up conceded thirty-five goals. Uh, in that promotion campaign, which is a little concerning. Um, and the concerns going forward as well. I mean, they, they had 16 shots in their, their league opener with Toulouse, um, and they, they were wasteful and could only draw 1-1 in that game. I think Amiens have, have strengthened going forwards, have brought in Gerassi and, and Kakuta. And Nîmes, I mean, they, they've lost um, uh, Savanier, who was their sort of key, key creator last season, most assists in the division. Uh, but they did finish ninth last season. I think uh, Bernard Blackard has uh, got a group there that um, should, should stay clear of relegation. So they'd be my... So you're going for Brest to go down? Brian, who do you like to go down? I like Toulouse to go down at 9-2. to um, They only finished on 38 points last season. The season before that, they won the relegation playoff, so they've been flirting with relegation for the last number of years. They've signed a new striker, a Greek striker, Kubris, in from, uh, in from Greece. I don't know much about him, but if he doesn't fire the goals, I think Toulouse will be in trouble again. And Mark? Yeah, I mean, we've got a different one from me. Amion, uh, they were they were They really, could all win. They, they? Yeah, they, they could. I mean, Amion were, were terrible on expected goals last season. Their budget, um, Nîmes and Brest are the only two teams in, in France with a smaller budget um, than them. Uh, L'Equipe handily published, actually, all the budgets the other day. I, I do like them. And I just think if you've got a small budget and you've got bad expected goals, um, that's, that's a recipe for disaster. Fantastic knowledge, guys. Absolutely brilliant. And don't forget, if you do enjoy what you're hearing from the lads here, there are fantastic European football tips right throughout the season, free for you to enjoy at racingpost.com or in the newspaper. Right, let's look at the other European leagues next. Here at Paddy Power, we're the home of the Money Back Special with some incredible offers every single week. Check out the website or app today. Terms and conditions apply. 18plusbegumbleaware.org. OK, welcome back. We've looked at the four main leagues. Let's look at what else Paddy Power are betting on. They've got some shows in Portugal and in Holland where we will go next. I think it's a two-horse race in Holland, isn't it, Brian? It is, yeah. It's Ajax 4-6 to six favourites, PSV 6-4, to four, and it's 25-1 to one by those two. Uh, who do you like there, Liam? Yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to go for Ajax. I've kept the bulk of their key players, Ziyech, Van der Beek, Tadic. I just scored an eye-water in 119 league goals last season, and I just think they're a cut above the rest. Mark? Yeah, there's talk that Lozano could be leaving PSV. Uh, De Jong has already departed. I'd be very surprised, actually, if Ajax blew this. Two-horse race in the Netherlands over in Portugal. It's a similar state of play, I think, isn't it, Brian? Yeah, we have Benfica at the top of the market, four to six. Porto, second favourites at fifteen to eight. Sporting Lisbon then at sevens and thirty-three to one. By those three, any juice there, Mark? Well, I mean, it's been a sensational start in Portugal. Porto have already lost one game. It's a bit like sort of the old firms that we used to be. If you lose one game, people say the league's over. But I think, I think the price may have gone a little bit too far. It's still only one match. You can recover. Porto went out of the Champions League um, on, on Tuesday night to Krasnodar. So it feels like a disaster zone at the moment. But, you know, this time last week, I would have said Porto were favourites to win the league in my eyes. Benfica, Los Real Felix and also uh, Jonas as well. I think he'll be an important figure in the dressing room that's no longer around. Let's forgive Porto their bad start. Liam? Uh, I'd, I'd actually go for Benfica. I just think the losses of Edel Militao and Felipe at the back could be too big. Uh, to overcome for Porto. I've also lost Oliver, Oliver Torres. Uh, and I don't think Jao Felix's departure will be uh, that felt at Benfica. They've got a, good, a lot of good uh, players going forwards. Wonderful stuff, lads. Thanks very much. Before we go, because there's a lot of short price teams and you don't really want to be backing them as singles, let's see if we can get an ACA. I want five components. Mark, uh, we'll let you chuck in two. Liam, you can chuck in two as long as I don't argue with Marks. And Brian, you can throw one in. Are you all right with that or are you going to throw a strop? That's good. That's good, good man. 
All right, well, you, you never know. You might get the casting vote, actually. So who are your two, Mark? Um, I'll go for Ajax to win the Eredivisie and Barcelona to win okay. that league. Okay. Uh, I'll go for Benfica to win the Primera Liga and uh, Inter Milan in a without market. In the without, okay. And Brian, you can chuck two in if you like, Brian. Well, they've taken my two, which were Inter, Inter Milan without and Ajax. So. Uh, oh well, I'll go to I'll go to Lyon without in France. Lyon without. I, I, I left that one sort of open because we all okay. fancied that. So yeah, I'll go Lyon. Right. So we're going to go with a five timer. It's Barcelona to win Serie. No, no, that was a bad start, wasn't it? Barcelona to win La Liga. Leon in the without PSG market in France. We've got Ajax, we've got Benfica in Portugal, and we've got Inter Milan without Juventus in Serie A. You happy with that, lads? Absolutely. All good. Brilliant. And you can back that one at power, paddypower.com or any other major bookmaker. OK, guys, thank you very much indeed. Great stuff. Like I say, there are superb European football previews every Saturday in the Racing Post. And we're back soon as well because only a matter of weeks before the Champions League starts. So we'll be doing a special postcast on that as well. Everything is better when it's bigger. Paddy Power's Same Game Multi allows you to combine a number of selections from a single match into one big bet. Check out the Same Game Multi tab and get building your bet. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus, begumbleaware.org.